Mira, today I will be doing part two, which is a continuation of the previous video on cash flow statement. We've got changes in working capital, which is the bottom part of your note number one, cash generated from operations for the cash flow statement. Now, it's just a continuation of example one from the previous video which is introduction to the cash flow statement. In part two, we will simply be calculating changes in working capital. Under working capital, we've got three headings, which is inventory, receivables, and trade in other payables. So we'll simply be looking at the cash effect that results from changes in inventories changes in trading other receivables and changes in trading other payables. Okay. Now, when you look at your inventory, your inventory for this year, which is 2022, June, um, the 30th of June, 2022, it's 105,000. Last year's inventory amounted to 121,000. And you realize that your inventory has gone down. Now, when they talk about inventory, when it comes to cash flow statement, you need to know that the reduction of inventory cash-wise relates or refers to the cash inflow. Now, the, the reason behind it is the fact that your trading stock will decrease when you sell. Hence, it results in a cash inflow. So a reduction of your inventory will result in a cash inflow. And when it comes to trading other receivables, remember trading other receivables relates to current assets. Basically, these are current debtors. Now, they currently owe us 58,000 in 2022. In 2021, they owed us 93,400. The only foreign item that will be included under trade and other receivables. It's not really a foreign item, but it must be disclosed or shown separately on the face of the cash flow statement due to materiality effect, okay? And that will be your sales income tax. So when sales owes us, the cash that relates to sales income tax, where it's cash inflow or cash outflow, it must be shown in the face of the cash flow statement because it's material and due to materiality principle, that's why we need to show it on the face of your cash flow statement. And it's one of the disclosure requirements, okay? Um, and then we're gonna have something we have, well, most schools don't do it, and we also don't do it, which is interest on a fixed deposit. Interest income must also be shown separately on the face of the cash flow statement, but um, I haven't seen it ever since I joined IEP. I haven't seen a question. And even when I was at the Department of Education, we, I, I never came across an example where they gave you interest on fixed deposit and you had to show it separately on the face of the cash flow statement. If there was interest on fixed deposit, we were going to deduct it from the total balance, okay? So that we we gonna do the calculation on it separately. If there is sales income tax in trade and other receivables, you're gonna deduct it in the year it was included. So you simply exclude it. Excluding means that it's not added, or if it was added, you simply subtract it so that you have zero on that particular item being included in your trade and other receivables. Now you realize that your trade and other receivables is sitting at 58,000 in 2022, and in 2021, it was sitting at um, 93,200. Now, because it has decreased. It means that people that were owing you are now paying you back. All right, I'm just going to move um, to trade and other payables. Okay. Let me just discuss um, the whole trade and other receivables before I even go to trade and other payables because I've discussed already. So I'll just put in the final amount. All I did here was just to realize that our inventory has decreased. It means that more stock was sold and um, resulting in cash inflow. Okay, more stock was sold, resulting in cash inflow. When it comes to trade and other receivables, you realize that 
I compare those two hormones that I've just highlighted. And there is no SARS income tax to exclude. And therefore, we can conclude that trade and other receivables have decreased, resulting in a cash inflow. I hope everything made sense here. Yeah, I'm just going to move to trade and other payables, as I've said before. Now, trade and other payables, it represents what is owing, well, what is owed to others, to the creditors, or whatever we owe. Okay, we have different types of creditors, which is just the current liability. And when it comes to trade and other payables, you need to exclude shareholders for dividends as well as SARS income tax, because dividends will be shown separately on the face of the cash flow statement, and SARS income tax will also be shown separately. And when I highlight those, all of those, I need to make sure that I exclude them. So I will exclude shareholders for dividends and SARS income tax, as these will be shown separately on the face of the statement of cash flow, okay? Now, when I exclude 55,400 and that's 6,200 from the 2022 trade and other payables, I will get 82,600. How did I get that 82,600? I simply took that 144,200 minus 55,400 minus 6,200. That's how I got into how, that's how I got into that 82,600. Okay, tongue twister there. And for 2021, my total balance for 2021 it's 145,700. From that 145,700, I need to deduct 34,000, which relates to shareholders for dividend. I also need to deduct SARS income tax of 4,900. And I will get to a new balance, which will be 106,800. These are my new balances. Trade and other payables have decreased, resulting in a cash outflow. Why is it a cash outflow? That is because when you owe people, and well, last year we owed them 106,800. This year we are only owing them 82,600. You realize that we are owing them lesser amount. The fact that we owe them lesser amount, the cash principle behind this is that you have paid. And when you pay your creditors, uh, that results in a cash outflow, as I'm saying, pay, pay results in a cash outflow. And the cash outflow will be the difference between those two. Okay. Let's get straight to it. This is what we got from example one. In example one, we had 60,000 as profit before tax. We had to add depreciation of 24,000 and add interest expense of 6,000. Please check the previous video to understand why we have to do that. But just to rewind, I'll simply say, the reason why we're doing that is because depreciation is a non-cash item and interest expense must be shown separately on the face of the cash flow statement. Okay, now going back to inventories, our change in inventory, we said that our inventory decreased. Now, since it has decreased, it will result in what we call um, cash inflow. A decrease means that we sold more stock, resulting in a cash inflow. Our cash inflow will be the difference between last year's balance and this year's balance. Please, guys, I only take bigger amounts minus smaller amounts. So you don't have to start with this year's amount minus last year's amount. No, as long as you understand what has happened, okay? Has inventory decreased or has it increased? If inventory decreased, it means money went out. If it increased, it means what? I mean, if it increased, it means money went out. 
because that means we bought more stock. If it decreases, it means that money came into the business. We sold stock, so it's a cash inflow. Decrease inventory is a cash inflow. An increase in inventory is a cash outflow. And I've explained that already. When it comes to trade and other receivables, make sure that you exclude sales income tax, okay? Now, since we have a decrease in trade and other receivables, that means that we got paid. The only reason, cash-wise, the only reason that could result in our trade and other receivables decreasing is when we, as the business, got paid. So our debtors will decrease because of that. And decrease in trade and other receivables will result in a cash inflow. Please note that whenever we have a cash inflow, you do not show it with brackets. Cash inflow is without brackets. And then we had a decrease in trade and other payables. When we compare this year's balance and last year's balance, we realized that there was a decrease in trade and other payables. When trade and other payables have decreased, as I've explained in the previous slide, then the decrease in trade and other payables will result in a cash outflow. That's why I'm showing it in red, just to show you that it's a cash outflow. Now, when I record it, I will record it with brackets. Outflow with brackets. And then I'm simply going to add them up. The 16,000 is positive, plus 34,000, 400, which is also positive, and then you plus negative 24,200, or you can simply say minus 24,200. I repeat 16,000 plus the 5,400 minus 24,200, it'll give you a cash inflow. Why is the cash inflow? Obviously, it's positive. And that's why it results in a cash inflow. It's because the inflows from inventory and trade and other receivables were greater than the outflow that resulted from trade and other payables. And obviously, the net cash inflow uh, from changes in working capital is that 27,200. I am simply going to take that 27,200 and add it with the 90,000, which is our operating profit before changes in working capital. 90,000, that's why I highlighted them in bold, 90,000 plus 27,200, it'll simply give us a cash generated from operations, which we will write it right at the end. And the amount will be 117,200, okay? So that's how we prepare the cash generated from operations. I hope you take, um, you take notes on everything and make sure that um, you take notes in the videos that we are going to have later on. And for this one, I just pray that you took all the notes, all the necessary notes, because guys, the first example is very important. Once you understand the first example and the principles in the first examples, all I'm doing in the next videos is just to repeat what I've just explained, okay? This will be the next example, which is example three. You need to use this information to prepare cash generated from operations. Here, please note that we've got interest not capitalized. And interest not capitalized will be included in trade and other payables, resulting in further adjustments when it comes to trade and other receivables and trade and other payables. Uh, and we'll talk about that when we get to it. Let me just show you trade and other payables. Please use this information to prepare this. Try this example before you watch the next video. 
خودتون